Ladies and gentlemen, we're, like every international experience that I've ever done, it's always an experience on a Saturday night, and uh, I would like to introduce the band here tonight. Let me turn off this air conditioner for a minute. We'll suffer. We will suffer. We have Andre Ramos, Ramos on drums, Vincent Ramos on bass, Jay Wise on guitar, and Fabian Grizel hailing all the way from Geneva, Switzerland, and uh, she's a new Vox, the new voice of the band. Out of their home base in L.A., Never Wonder came into existence with a unique sound, which I agree with very much, of rock, pop, and soul fusion. And we need that more than ever in this world. Their music is driven by their strong musicianship and rooted from life's experiences. So anytime you guys are ready to rock out, I'm ready for you. All mics are hot. You guys are on. Alan, we're ready? You're ready. I'm ready over here. All right. So. I'm ready. Hello, everybody. Hello. What's happening? Hey. Sounds good. Two, two. One, two. I don't have any vocals. Two, two. We're on? Yeah. Mm. they call the sound of one hand clapping never wonder is in the studio with us tonight so uh listen you guys i got a few questions for you uh, how did you find this beautiful singer uh, how did she come into your uh, into your existence how did you how did you meet these guys anybody i think you should answer that <laughs> yeah can you hear me through this yeah i could oh, hear you perfect. Um, <clears throat> actually, I met these guys um, through, I got a phone call one time from, uh, well, I think it was an email perhaps, from Vince. They were looking for a singer. 
and um, and then um, I auditioned basically for the band. Ah, this is the mic. Got it. There, there. Oh, okay. Sorry, we're switching mics here, you guys. Hang on. Oh, so much better. Is it? Yeah. Okay, because I can't hear anything, so I hope I'm on. I can hear you. You can hear me great? Okay, perfect. Um, so, yeah, so basically I was saying that uh, Vince, one time, basically was the bass player of the band, reached out to me. They were looking for a singer, and they were like, hey, you know, we saw your music. We like it, because I was doing my own stuff for a bit. And he's like, yeah, do you guys want, do you want to uh, audition for the band? We'd love yeah. to have you come down and try it out. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, okay, why not? Let's do it. You have a beautiful voice. Is, oh, thank are, you. Are you. Were you singing when you were very small? Yes. Is that something you did, like <laughs> four years old, you know, your mom and dad would get you in front of Almost, the relatives? Not, not quite four, but like seven. <laughs> like um, seven, yeah. Yeah, my well, mom enrolled me in a kid's choir at church because she was tired of me fighting her to go to church. Yeah, why don't you go to church? <laughs> and, you joined the, and you immediately joined the choir, and right? And I immediately joined the That's choir. That's how I made it through school. I yes. immediately joined the band and the made orchestra. It, made me, made, get, got me through life a whole lot, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. How, how long have you been in the United States? I've been in the States for 24 years now. Oh, so you know, it, it hasn't always been like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yes. It exactly. used to yeah, be a lot many, different. Many different lives. Many different, uh, uh, what they call uh, phantasmagoric things have happened in this, right. in this yes. country. Many so, uh, yeah, and the new album, uh, I guess you have uh, two, two, uh, two uh, songs off the new album. Yes. Uh, it's an EP. Uh, are you going to do a whole album with you? Yes, we are. So... Uh, Dre, why don't you take that one instead that one for us? Yeah, this should pass the mic around. Yeah, so the idea is definitely to uh, write. We have about six songs that are, you know, that we feel are are somewhat ready to rock, ready to get in the studio. So uh, we got we're gonna write a bunch more, and uh, we definitely plan on having uh, an album out probably early, probably early Feb. Uh, sorry, twenty nineteen. Um, I would imagine. I mean, shoot, we're right around the corner, so that's that's the idea, definitely. So we got some uh, 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 drum tracks recorded. Now we got to do the rest of the tracks, but we're coming along. Yeah. So how long has the whole band? I mean, uh, you guys, the Ramos Brothers. How long have you been under the name Never Wonder? That's a good question. Yeah. Never Wonder, two thousand six. Yeah. 2006, something like that. Yeah, 12 years, yeah, wow. Something like that, yeah. That's pretty good. A lot of incarnations. Yeah. And uh, the beauty of music is that it evolves, but if you're true to it, and it, it, it comes back to you, and, and how it's come back to us is with these two great members, with Jay yeah, and Bob and yeah. the band. There you go. So for us, yeah. it's sometimes difficult, but um, at the moment, it isn't. It's completely beautiful. And, it and, is. And, and it's, it's a lot of great passion, and... Uh, we're very excited of what the situation is right now, for sure. Well, you know, Trent Reznor talked about that when he wanted to quit Nine Inch Nails, and he said, you know, I need the music in my life, but he always uses different musicians. Yeah. That's and, exactly you know, true. to see where he can go with those people. And I see this this incarnation is a, is a good one. I, I like it. Oh, well, thank you very you much. You guys were here. I know you were here, like, like years ago. Uh, I mean, this thing's yeah. been going on since yeah. the advent of, uh, of of Internet radio. That That is true, <laughs> and... Uh, uh, we yeah. are excited to be back here when um, when Doug proposed it and you guys were talking about it. Um, we were excited to come back and, and do something like cool, this. Man. It's a very comfortable and um, uh, just a beautiful atmosphere here. And yeah, and you, and you, and you got a beautiful cat back you there the looking cat. at you. Yes. Yeah. And if anybody has an EpiPen for Dre, um, we will need that a little bit later. <laughs> well, she doesn't really. Do, she she is brushed and spoiled yeah. so much that she won't even cause any. I noticed that any she, problems. Like I moved the chair and she didn't even move. Well, she has three legs. One three of them legs. was removed because she had cancer on her three palm. Good legs, though, right? So, but she jumps around like she has six legs now. She is so fast. You know, cats don't need rehabilitation. They just jump around and do what the hell they want. So, yeah, do you have another song? How many songs do you have in your uh, in your repertoire tonight for us? We play till midnight if you want us to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll do a few songs. I don't know if the neighbors will go for that. Right. Yeah, about twelve tonight, uh, give or take. A look. Let yeah, us know what you want. We can do less or more. Yeah, this is for the uh, for the microphone. Man. You can put it anywhere you want. Yeah, definitely. Art, right, why don't you why don't you take this? Our trusty. Sound man Art is with us tonight. What up, Art? Wherever you want it. 
on the table, you know, on the floor. The so you want another one, right? Yeah. So the Viper Room's going going away. They're gonna they're gonna destroy the Viper Room. I from what I hear. Yeah. Uh, the the owners of the uh, of the land bought it for uh, eighty million. Same thing they did to the t- the beautiful House of Blues. They're going to do the Viper Room. So that place won't be there. I'd say in the next six months they're going to demolish it. It's sad because there's so there's there the club the club scene from from when Mario who owned the Rainbow and the you know and the Roxy and the the whiskey that club scene is just shrinking yep. but you guys play a lot of out you play a lot all over the place yeah. it doesn't have to be the whiskey go go where you have to pay them <laughs> you guys go all around what's your next gig man uh, our next gig um, I can hear you You're here. Okay. Uh, our next gig, actually, if you guys want to follow us on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., we post all the stuff up there. You can go on the website at neverwonder.com and be on our newsletter uh, to receive all the brand new stuff. But our next gig is going to be at the Silver Lake Lounge, September 7th, Friday at 9.15. So cool. So I hope you can make it so yeah. we can see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody go down there. And meet us. We'd love to meet you guys. So. Come Why right pay a hundred dollars to see somebody who's been around for eighty years, where you could <laughs> where you could see a brand new band, <laughs> band that's been around? Okay, the floor is yours. This is Never Wonder. Okay. This next one is called. <laughs> what's that? This next one is called Help Me. Push people away 
decided it wants to be part of the music. Can you hand me that, please? That microphone. Oh, well, it's going. It 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 it's like singing harmony during the song. <laughs> what you get for paying five dollars off eBay? This is the International Experience. Uh, my name is Voodoo Man. We have Never Wonder in the studio. Okay, that noise is gone forever. And uh, you guys, um, so there, there, you do have some gigs coming up. I know that. So, how's the uh, the relationship between you uh, when you're all do in the studio? Is it, is it a calm, good atmosphere when you're in there all together? Rehearsal or recording? Uh, well, you need this microphone for me to hear you. Well, I'm not, yeah, art rather. I don't know what the hell's wrong with it. Let's see. It's one of those things that starts picking up alien signals. All right. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's weird sounds. Let's see here. No, that's not going to do it. Uh, why don't you play another song, and, and I'll fix this, and then we can talk. All right, Never Wonders in the Studio. My, uh, my very inexpensive uh, handheld is not, not very good. Okay, it's all yours, you guys. All right, this is a new song called Spell.
I got this mic working. You got it? No, it's, and it's making the alien sounds. <laughs> you heard it, you'd think it was, they were trying to communicate with us. Anyway, this is experience, and of course, you know, when I need something to work, it doesn't. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Beautiful voice, beautiful voice. Every, everybody's doing really great tonight. It's uh, good to have you in the studio. I'd like to thank uh, Kate Crash for coming down, and uh, she put 22 songs on her album. 22. 22 songs. She said wow. she just wrote a song every day, and she wrote, she wrote for 30 days. She had 30 songs, and then she picked 22 of them, and, uh, you know, it all, it all kind of comes together. Uh, we're in the studio, um, and the, the, new, uh, the new EP is available uh, on your website. Is that right? Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. Can you hear me with this? Yeah, I can hear you good okay, with that. Okay, cool. Uh, the uh, EP is actually available on our website at neverwonder.com. It's available on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on CD Baby. Pretty much everywhere you can get, you know, indie music nowadays. So cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the new songs, did, did you uh, collaborate with the guys? Okay, on huh? the songs, actually, those songs were actually already written when I showed up. Yeah. Uh, but me and Jay, which is the new guitarist of the band, uh, we kind of put our stamp on it. So it wasn't mm. quite exactly the same, and we kind of, yeah, kind of, you know, made it ours. So yeah, yeah. So Coming into a brand new band. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So in, w- when you were in band. Switzerland, were you in a rock band in Switzerland? I was in many bands in Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had quite a few different bands. What are the club? What's the club scene like there? Oh, very, very little when I was there. Really? Uh, yeah, I, it might be different now, but uh, when I was growing up, there was only two or three different places you could play live in Geneva, which is where I'm from. So, yeah. which is the reason why I came here. Because what uh, part of Switzerland is that? Geneva is the south. It's the French-speaking part. Oh wow! Yeah, close to France. It's beautiful Italy. area, huh? Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah. What was your motivation to come to the United States? Was, uh, was I went to music school here? I came to the States, and then like it was just there's not a whole lot of music. You know, it's a lot of musicians where I'm from, but not a whole lot of places to play. Right. So right. you kind of have to go and elsewhere to, you know, to do that. Yeah, yeah that's the thing about uh, Los shame, Angeles. Man. You know, it doesn't have to be on the Sunset Strip. There's clubs all over there's the place. Every, yeah, there's so much from music from San there, Diego you know? to San Francisco and. You know, in between. Right. You and know? nowadays you can even do it in your living room. You, know? you can like do it in the living room, Jerry, just like this. So, right. And I'll tell you what, Jerry Garcia had a little pirate radio station in Haight Ashbury, and he used to bring bands in like The Doors or The Jefferson Airplane. And that's kind of where I got the idea because KPFK here in town did a, did a show called Live from Studio B, and they made their whole second floor, which is still on Cahuenga, look like somebody's living room. They had a little fireplace in there, and they had the rugs. And, and that's kind of how I got the idea to bring bands in here. Over a 1,000 bands and musicians have been in here over the past uh, 10 years, and it's always an honor to hear uh, the music and for the people to hear that, you know, you don't have to keep listening to the same artist over and over again, which they plug at you right. on, uh, on the radio or wherever you're listening. Uh, go for the local bands where you're at and explore what's going on around you because there's a place called Time Warp Records in uh, Mar Vista. And on Friday and Saturday nights, they just have bands in there and it's free. And the guy has LPs, he has vinyl. So while you're listening to the bands, you can look through the vinyl. And it's, uh, you guys should check that place out because it gets a good crowd in there, you know. Put out a tip jar, you might make a few bucks. You well, never thanks for having us, first of all. Oh, That's it's really, my pleasure. Really Always a pleasure. To be here. And like you said, yes, it's great when people support. Over the, the years, show. Doug Deutsch has not booked a horrible band on my show. <laughs> he knows that this show only has the finest bands in the world. Well, Doug's a special yeah. guy. Yeah, he sure he is. And he has, an, he has two good ears for music, you know. I mean, he really can Shoot. center in on, on what... What's going on, you know, in the zeitgeist, you know, of uh, of uh, music in Los Angeles, and uh, you know now it's it's all it's the world that you're talking to, you know, it's incredible what's happened within just so the, what's changed in here since we've been here last is is just the world's exploded over social media and and everything. It has been it's tremendous. Uh, the, yeah, the, the reach that we can get today than say when Never Wonder first started. There's so many different platforms That's now. Absolutely true. So yeah. the world is smaller. 
but just as tough in the sense of you know carving out a niche for yourself. So. Yeah, when you go to band camp, you see all those bands, and I interview with a lot of those bands. But you know, music is so diverse. Something that might that I might not like, somebody else will like. And there was a lot of that going on, you know, just people who would stay in their bedroom somewhere in Belgium and record all, everything on their computer. I still don't get that. But, you know, I, I didn't say, well, you, maybe you should get a band to incorporate what you're doing with that. And, and I said, maybe that'll be good for film music, you know, that kind of stuff, because it's just in and it's drones, a bunch of drone music. It's not it's not. It's soulful, like Aretha Franklin. Yeah, you I know? guess guys like that, they, they just, uh, they don't play well with others or something, you know? So. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, they don't, so, do they? No, but, you know, you know I, I appreciate that, too. I mean, a guy that can produce his stuff and, and, and really handle that, but you're right. I mean, collaborating, doing that, but that's, he has, that's if the, the art of it. If you know? the guy has five albums and every one of them sound the same, there's something wrong. Good point. Yeah, <laughs> good point. There has to be diversity. I'm not putting any of that down. I mean, I, I was invited to see Lady Gaga at one point, and the opening act was just a girl doing computer sounds. I didn't get it. You know, it was, to me, it sounded like feedback. And the music And then she goes, here's a new song I just wrote. <laughs> and it was the same thing. You know, I didn't get it. I think it's her sister's, uh, one of her sister's friends, and she said, just get out there and do it. And I don't think she did it again after that. Because L.A. was going, ugh. Please, give us a guitar or something. Yeah. There's taste for everyone. Give us a guitar. So uh, who's your board guy? What's your name, man? This is Art. Yeah, make them talk. Wow. It's not many times that there's another guy working on another board besides me. Thanks for doing that. You guys haven't touched the food. No. Right, say, say a few words. Come on. Don't touch and drive. Say hello. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's shy. He's shy. That's okay. It's all right. So uh, what are your immediate plans for uh, recording? What's uh, going on in the studio right now? Uh, well, we're actually we're writing uh, new material with, um, with a couple of the songs you probably will hear tonight. You already heard one, uh, which was called Spell. That's a new one. Uh, so we're actually writing right now, and we're hoping to get into the studio by the end of the year. Hopefully we'll get something for you guys already to listen to by the beginning of next year. That's kind of the, the plan at the moment. Of the moment. Yeah. Because so that, could, that could change and just yeah, you know, blink I of mean, an we, eye. We've got, you know, we have get, you know, gigs coming up. We're, we're yeah. playing here. We're playing in Vegas. We're playing, you know, up and down the coast. So we've got places that we play. And, uh, so, you know, whenever we have a minute, we kind of... We always get together, try to write, you know, so we kind of do it in between uh, those those <coughs> moments, you know. Cool. So whenever possible, we kind of work on new stuff, yeah. Because music is your life, and that's what it's yeah. all about. Because yes, everything is. else is, is, is second. <coughs> the music comes first, always. At least, you know, for me, I thought I was going completely deaf until I got some new hearing aids. This year's deaf. And it would be such a tragedy never to hear music again. Especially so, you know, that's something that I don't take for, for, for granted at all, you know. It's like what happened to Beethoven in his later life. And he wrote the ninth completely deaf by laying on the piano. I don't want to be laying on anything right in music, that's for sure. This is the International Experience, and we have Never, <laughs> never Wonder in the studio. And thank you for uh, handling that for me, man. Uh, how about uh, my manager blinked me. She said you can go till eight, so she blinks me because we have a code on 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 uh, on my thing. So we can go till eight with the music because one of the neighbors went, "What the hell's going on?" They should know after I've been here twenty five years that a band is going to be here on Saturday night. <laughs> Every Saturday night, that's what's going to happen. Wait till my birthday. There's like four bands coming. They're going to love it. All right, you guys, the floor is yours. Never so wonder. Thanks for having us, first of all. For the music, right? We can do a little talk afterwards and stuff like that. Ah, my pleasure. Oh, that would be awesome. So we'll just a couple of songs here. Up. All right. Yeah. Give it all. Yeah, it's all yours. It all. It's on the EP. So if you guys haven't grabbed an EP yet, please go get yourself one. If you have a CD player, please grab a CD. If not, you can download it uh, on all the usual mediums. So this is called Give It All. <laughs>
This is John Redcorn from King of the Hill, and you're listening to Buddha Man's International Experience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Boy, that sounded good in my ears. I mean, wow. Thanks to the mixer over here, man. It sounded beautifully. So how about one more for the road? One more for the road. One more, one more for my baby, and one more for the road. What a save me, Jay. So this one is again another one from the EP here. Yes, this is the second from the EP, and uh, it's called Moving On. <laughs>
beautiful, Thank beautiful, you. beautiful, beautiful. So you guys are playing something uh, in in Vegas called the Rock and Roll Marathon, and I, I, is that right? You want to yeah. hand somebody the mic and uh, tell me all about that? I'm looking at it here. It's uh, November. Let's see, November eighth, ninth, tenth. Uh, what days are you, where? where uh, what venue are you guys playing at? Well, that's that's the thing about that uh, gig. It's it's actually you play to I don't know. It's about twenty to twenty five thousand runners. Wow. So there's a there's a stage at every mile. Yeah. And uh, we we usually like play. It just depends. The last few times we played in front of the the stratosphere, and I don't remember what stage it was. It might have been like stage ten or stage nine. So yeah. Um, it's a really cool event. Um, it's at night, and uh, we, uh, we we go up there. We play a few few sets, and we share the stage with other bands. It's it's really awesome. So, um, so yeah, Jay, you probably have a couple things about it, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, we get some of the runners actually jump up on stage and actually oh. rock and roll with us, and we get to uh, man, it's just a blast because they already have a bunch of energy going, so they even get us more energy and. Yeah, they wear cool costumes, right, Greg? Yeah, totally. Like, cool costumes. They got, like, uh, Superman, Batman, SpongeBob, you name it, like, dragons and whatnot. So, it's really cool. Yeah, Elvis is there for sure. Elvis and, is always there. Oh, yeah, there. Elvis really kills it. Yeah. So, it's a really cool show. You bring the mic down, and, uh, and then I don't have to get up. <laughs> That mic seems, the one you're talking about seems, it has a loose connection on the end of it. Can I see it a second? Yeah. I think it probably just needs a new cord. Testing one, yeah. Okay, it's Wiken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check, check. You hear me? I hear you. All right, what's going on? Not much, man. I, I got questions here. I, I got bet questions. you do. You okay? always do. I remember I always this. do. So who are some of the bands that, uh, that, that have influenced uh, uh, your musical tastes over the years? Uh, from from Vincent or never wonder from from from, myself, from, from, from your uh, from personally you know obviously obviously you have the you have the idea of Led Zeppelin and um, you know you have all the bands you know like Prince and um, as a bass player I'm into like you know funk and groove and rock yeah and, um, so you always have those great artists that that did that but um, in that you know ACDC you wouldn't consider them like like a groove band per se, but the the drummer, you know, and you know Phil Rudd and and you know, um, they just such solid meters. It was influenced, obviously John Bonham, yeah, you know, John yeah. Paul Jones, those those type of things were the meters that created who I am. And having my brother in the band, um, it was something that was just something that was about us, you know. And then obviously Rush, you it's, know, it's, it's going out again. Oh, yeah. just play with it. Mine is mine seems to be. I think all the sound we pumped through here tonight, it's. Uh, it's affecting the uh, everything. Hello, testing. Okay, now it's good. Oh, it's back. All right, you know, so things you know, get twisted. Bands, things get twisted and you shit. Know, yeah, we, we hit things. And, um, yeah. Just, you know, at the end of the day, hey. um, groove, prints, yeah. everything like that um, um, from my end personally. Yeah. You know. Did you um, ever get the chance to see uh, Led Zeppelin uh, in, no. in their heyday? Nope. No, no, no. I'm still a pup. I'm 21. Do you hear that? Yeah. It's, it I keeps don't. popping out. I don't, don't. So I'll share a mic with... Uh, How's that? Is that better? Check, check, check. Better. I have no That's idea. Better. That's better. Yeah, That's yeah. Better. It's okay. That's, That's better. Work. Check. Okay. Check, 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 check. Yeah, I know where it's at. We got a dirty pot here. That's what it is. Is that okay. one bad? Oh, let me turn that one up. Oh, okay. There you go. How's that? Yeah, okay, I like your tattoos. Did you get those here or in, uh, or in Switzerland? Um, both. I were started you, in Europe when I was very young. Were you, were you really drunk? <laughs> no, I yeah. never did one of those. Yeah. Now I got I, these. I think I them did. through a lot, actually, before yeah. I get them done. I keep death on my... I keep death, uh, Dr. Death here, the oh, Grim wow. Reaper on my arm to remind me of, uh, of my mortality. You know, that everybody everybody leaves. You know, everybody goes. Every, and that's that song. I got everybody... Hurts. 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 That's just <laughs> the, 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 the video to that. You just, just want to go, you know, oh, you don't even shoot yourself. It's the International Experience on a Saturday night on the 15th. We're having our birthday show for the uh, 10th time. You guys are invited if you want to come and have some yeah. cake oh. uh, or whatever. And uh, we're going to have a bunch of L.A. musicians and uh, some other, uh, uh, you know, some, some of the uh, uh, 
stranger people from other dimensions, you know, who say they're from other dimensions, <laughs> come in here and, and, and join us Talk on that us? night. Are we going to have Elvis Presley here? Elvis will be here. Yeah, I think Elvis is always here. Yeah, no matter right. where you go, Elvis is here. I have a, a table over there. That table, my dad uh, worked at a furniture manufacturing, because you mentioned Elvis. Those, were, those tables, if you look at that table over there, it has the autographs of every single actor that worked uh, that worked at MGM, and Elvis Presley's uh, uh, signature check, check. is on, on there. Huh? Yeah, you're sounding good now, man. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. So in Switzerland, what's the music like in Switzerland? Uh, tell me about some of the artists there that that you listen to. Oh, would you mean when I was there? <laughs> yeah, when you were there. <laughs> if you can I remember, I can't tell you because I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Um, um, whew. What I was into? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I'm into a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, I grew up with jazz at home. My father was a trumpet player, so oh, I, wow. I grew up with Miles Davis and Louis Armstrong. Yeah, my dad was a sax player, so yeah. I grew up with that so, same kind of music. Know, yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, that, that type of music was in the house a lot. Classical music also is big in Europe, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so I got into that too and then f in the pop world you know I had some um, I really loved The Police when I was growing up yeah uh, I love uh, The Cure I was a big Cure fan I still um, am yeah me yeah. too I love um, I was I like Kate um, Kate Bush I yeah. love her vocals yeah, yeah fantastic vocalist and piano player um you know, just different stuff. I, you know, from jazz to pop to rock. I, I'm a big Led Zeppelin fa fan. Of course, you can't be. Yeah. You can't uh, play Zeppelin. rock without without liking Led Zeppelin. It's the new name of the band. <laughs> Le uh, what is Zepp Zeppelin? Right. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So you know, the, the, the well, they're you know, the you gotta like those guys. I mean, you know, they're they're the benchmark. You yeah, know, for sure. They're the sure. benchmark. I saw them in 1977. It was the physical oh, wow. the physical graffiti tour, Fantastic. and I remember I went the opening and closing nights. They played seven nights at the Forum for seven dollars. Wow. You know, but la the last night I I got my ticket from a scalper or two of them for hundred dollars, and. Uh, I think it, that probably is in my top five of, of the greatest things I've I've ever seen on stage. Oh, I'm sure it must have been were these special. were these guys up there when they did No Quarter and John John uh, John Paul Jones was doing No Quarter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody went out for beer. <laughs> you know, the whole forum wow. just got up because really? he did like this twenty-minute thing. I sat there and went, "Wow!" Sure, sure. You know, because he had the bass. He was doing the bass thing, and then he was doing it was. And a lot of it, he went like you talk about jazz. He went into this improv for at least in the middle of no quarter, and then there's that piano and that organ solo. He went off into some other dimension, sure. and it was wow. different every time. And I saw him first night and the oh, and closing night, and it was different. It was a different middle. You know who did that a lot? Uh, so Frank cool. Zappa. He, he did that a lot. He would go on stage and all of a sudden, this, the thing you saw last year that Zappa and the mothers, I saw them with the mothers, did right. and his band, he would change it. That's, King that's Crimson. That's the best is, thing, you know, I think when you yeah. live, you know, it's just, you know, if I just want to hear the record and then I'll, right. get, I'll buy the record, you know. You go buy the record. That's yeah, what Robert I just, Fripp says. I just think, you know, when you're live, there's so many possibilities and so many things you can do yeah. that, on, the, on the fly like that. And I, yeah. I really appreciate people who do, do you like that, King? You, know. you like King Crimson? You know what? Actually, I'm not too familiar. Oh, you would love yeah. them. Yeah. And they're another band. They've been around since the uh, late 60s. Mm -hmm. And Robert Fripp, uh, he always has new musicians come with him. I mean, he is... Uh, if, you, if you listen to them live... On their records, uh, when they put out a record, a live one, it'll say improvisation number one. And then the next CD might say improvisation number two and number three. And they take basic chords from their songs so people recognize who are King Crimson fans that that's the song. And then they go out. They go out into this That's other cool. place, That's cool. and it, it's like it's kind of like you know. That's I cool. saw Miles Davis. You know, he turned yeah. around, had the wow. three quarters of the way, he just looked at the wall at the Hollywood Bowl. He just really? looked this way. Wow. One time he turned around and to do something with his trumpet, but you never really saw his face. Wow. So that's pretty cool. That's the cool other that you saw that, yeah. And the, the, also some of the music that I was into when I was in Europe, um, a lot of, you know, I speak French and I speak a few other languages, so a lot of the French music too. There's some cool French pop that I was into. And I like gypsy music as well. Oh, I like gypsy music. Yeah, yeah, so I'm really into that stuff. So I, I yeah. a lot of different stuff. I really grew up on a whole, whole lot of different types. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. That, that, well, that's good. You have a diversity of, of different styles to choose from when you sing. Yeah. And uh, did that come naturally to you? And then did you take lessons? Singing, you mean? Yes. Yes. I. Uh, uh, well, I think both. I think I grew up, I just, I think very early on I, I liked to sing. Mm-hmm. So um, so I kind of started, you know, just uh, just music spoke to me right away. I felt right. like it was just uh, connected for some reason for me. Do so. you read music? Uh, badly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Very badly. I used to read it. Uh, now but I, read uh, it but very I studied badly. a long time, and actually now I teach. So uh, oh, you so do? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a, that's a good yeah. thing. You pass it on to the next to the, uh, the knowledge, the, yeah, to the next generation. Well, Jay Wise is the is the other new guy. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, Jay Wise. Yeah. Jay is wise. I am Jay is wise to be a never one. Sometimes. I'm wise. <laughs> Other times I'm well, there are times. Ass. Well, we're human. We can't be perfect. The last girl I had here said that one day we're going we're going to be part cyborg and part human. You know, the whole world okay. will be Westworld. It's not that far away. It's not that wow. far away. Yeah, that's a great show. And you know, uh, uh, do you do you in in a whole uh, your musical life? Uh, did you start very young, Jay, uh, with the music? Yeah, I started about 13. Really? About 13 years old. Yeah. Were you in the band in school? I was. I yeah. played trumpet in school. Did and you? Then, really? uh, I met oh, the cool trumpet. kids during the summer. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of like yeah. one of those guys. Yeah, 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 he, he doesn't yeah. tell anything yeah. until he's there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's because you love the instrument. I had I clarinet. I was forced to practice. Yeah. You know, you practice today, but I got to like it. I played for 25 years, and I played saxophone. Yeah. B-flat. I tried flute, but it was in the key of C, and that was like a foreign language. I, w- I would try to do French. Sure. I'd speak French. Sure. It was just different, you know? <laughs> so uh, what was the first uh, influential uh, musician or band that, that made your, you know, the hair on, the, on your arms stand up? The Eagles. Yeah? Yes. They're playing the form again. Yeah, they, yeah. That was back in the day when they were still together and yeah. everything was okay. But, uh, man, my uh, my uh, cousin was a vocalist and, and a player, and he sounded exactly like Don Henley. Oh, wow. And it just turned me on. And yeah. uh, I, I lo- just loved every part of it. So uh, Yeah. But since then, I've, I've become jazz trained. You know, I, I do teach as well. Um, so it's, it, it, it's a blast, man. Yeah, I was listening to 88.5 today, and they were playing Elvis Costello, and all of a sudden it drifted to something else, and I didn't know. And it was uh, the Dave Clark Five. And I go, what is the Dave Clark Five doing on a rock? I had drifted over to 88.1, and then they have this show called Nothing But the Blues. Have you ever, have, ever, have you yes. guys ever heard that show? I have, yes. And they expanded it, and it was like coming home. Because I grew up with that, you know, yeah. that, that kind of music, you know, that, you know, like B.B. Uh, King, uh, you know, uh, I met him at the Johnny Carson show oh, many, sweet. many years ago. A very, very down-to-earth guy. I saw him, the last time I saw him was when Universal had the amphitheater, and he came out and he said, I'm old enough that I could sit down. <laughs> you know? of Leon, Leon Russell was the, the same person. way. Yes. You know, I earned it. B.B. Yeah. King had that sense of humor. You know, and I, I I met him that night. I was about, uh, I was in my early twenties, and I and I met him, and uh, he just had that thing about him, yeah. like you knew he was in the room. Yes. You know? yes, yes. <laughs> so anyway, it's been good having you guys on the show, and I mean, uh, incredible. And I wish you uh, all the best of luck. And uh, I, I got to interview this guy over here. Yeah. Which okay. Ramos are you, man? I'm Andre. Hey, Andre. Dre. It's Andres, but uh, every Dre, 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 yeah, Dre, 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 yeah, Dre, like Dr. Dre. Yeah. Hey, what do you think of the Raiders this year? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I used to be a big Raiders fan yeah. back in the day, and I, I kind of let it go. Yeah. But to be honest with you, but you know, I know you're you're a big Raiders fan. Yeah. So is our sound guy. So yeah. But no, I appreciate them, and I'm, it's kind of cool that they've gone to Vegas. You know, to be honest with you, I don't like it. I, I kind of think it's a good place for them. I, I think guess that's so. Where they yeah. Need to go, you know, so. Yeah. Because uh, they'll get their own stadium and they'll probably make more money yeah, yeah, as if totally. they need it. Yeah, yeah. These totally. guys make a lot of money. You know when they got, what, they can't headbutt each other anymore. Right, 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 right. They can't do it. And you've been watching any of the exhibition games. They're so used to doing it. They've been, at, you know, like the goats. Right, right, Just right. going for it and getting penalties. Well, I, well, Learn an exhibition. How did the, how did the goats for them today? They lost. They, they, they were ahead the whole it. game. They, uh, the whole game against the Rams, they were at, the, okay, there they go, and boom. Last part of the game, they lost yeah, on the field it's goal. All, all it's always stuff, that, right? you, you forget it, you know, yeah. many, many, many penalties. Yeah, totally. Like, oh, I didn't know that we're not supposed to, you know, hit 
helmets anymore. Right. They were told. And a lot of these, a lot of things that are going on with the NFL, a lot of teams are going like this. We're not going to show the nef- national anthem. So they're cutting it out of their broadcast. Oh, well, because of the one knee thing? Or well, what? they don't want any controversy. Right. They don't want uh, politics or the man up in, in, in the White House yeah. talking about him, right. like, talking shit about him. So I think Dallas is doing it, and I think it will follow. Commissioner wants them all to not even show it. Why cause controversy when we're just trying to watch a game? You know, and that's actually that's, that's kind of an interesting point because um, in Europe, we um, unless you're playing against a, a different country, yeah, you don't play at the national anthem at every game. Oh, you really don't. No, if it's national, if it's within the country, you don't. Well, it's just causing when problems. You're, you're it's you're causing problems in yeah. politics. Wh- why did they start it? It was in the World War Two, right, or World War One? Yeah, they, that's t- for morale of the of the of the country. They yeah. started playing the national anthem anthem in front of. Uh, before uh, yeah. major league or uh, yeah, it wasn't baseball. always there. Right, right, yeah. right. And then so it, it, I think you know, let's concentrate on the game. On that, what some guy is saying about right. you know, guys who are raising their hands. If they want to do that, let them do it. Yeah, totally. It's none of anybody's business in politics, as far as I can see. Absolutely. So uh, never wonders. Unique sound is a blend of rock, pop, and soul. And you guys are really, really great. And uh, thank, thank you, you so much. Oh, you keep you, you grow and you 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 uh, you. Um, transform into Absolutely. different modes of, of music especially with the jazz influence you guys got you know mm-hmm. the first time I heard Thelonious Monk I couldn't believe what I was hearing I thought it was the worst shit I ever heard <laughs> and then I studied it and I looked at the music and then I started to understand it a little bit sure. it was I was like 10 and I didn't know I was listening to Wes Montgomery I was listening to the big bands and Frank Sinatra and, and the Deep Great American Songbook and there my mom brought this album home at Thelonious Monk's first one and I, I didn't understand <laughs> at all. You know, I just it just went whoa. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I should play some Felonious Monk. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, thanks for having Any us more so plugs you guys want to put in? You know, just the website. You know, social media all across the the webs. You know, the world. Check us out. Um, iTunes. You know, everything. Yeah, follow us, Apple, like us. follow Instagram. You know, Spotify everything. Spotify. Right? Everything. Check us out. We, you know, we love to hear from you guys. September seventh is our next show. Two and a half weeks away. Cool. And uh, all over Silver Lake. So it's going to be happening. Come check it out. All right. We look forward to it. Come and say hi. I would love to meet you guys. Yeah, yeah. Come Come out. Yeah, come Come out. Come out and see the band.